sauerkraut, waterfall, all olive, all bow, bow, wow, pow, tow, pow, south side, outside, pow, pow, outline, missile thought, fire, bounce, higher, pose, oh no. I was outside, now my power, pow, pow, now. Eyes where I should've speak up to the upside down, camera obscura, power down, scuba, mommy in Cuba, my wrist sounds good now. Out and about, title bout, bow, how loud, high, loud, move, tie, ass, tick, bow, arm, NASDAQ, abstract, back and rockin' chow down, has me to do some style. Metrically outbound Matter of fact, past that ginger pop in the cooler Cooler than the medulla of Rick the Ruler Hula hooping with new bow downs from Nuba That's that life of a king, got my crown out Feeling accomplished, super looper fresh chocolate Collective conscious, young crunk in your town now Viamana aircraft, snapping like a bear trap Tijuana Air Max, chainmail gone The earthquakes, 100 dB, 90 BPM, heavy hitting them triple list, 100 sided dice, roll the 79 twice. Get ready, we bringing the jazz back with the rhythm, we giving them simple missiles of Midwest liquid mission. Tricky nicks and mixing, matching, scratching, rapping, action, Jackson making it happen. Pap it, midi, patch it, mapping with a pinch of magic, casting master synthesis. We gang of wig, give vixens, listening close to O's, flipping different widgets, mystic digits, coast to coast, pole to pole, folding time, golden time. Over low on Good evening and welcome here on this Friday. I'm Mark Wilson. And I'm Allie Corey. Thanks for being with us. First at 10, Russian collusion in our own backyard. A federal indictment says Russia wanted to cause political turmoil in the U.S. and found a willing partner in a group based in St. Pete. The indictment describes a conspiracy of propaganda, misinformation campaigns, and direct meddling in local elections that began years ago. The indictment doesn't identify the local group by name, but all evidence points to St. Pete's Uhuru House. And today, the Uhuru all but confirmed it. Fox 13's Haley Hines is here tonight with more for us. Haley. Haley, the indictment says that for more than seven years, Russia targeted the United States to carry out this influence campaign. It says they recruited three political groups, one believed to be Uhuru in St. Pete. They helped fund the group's political campaigns and flew its leader to Russia to form a partnership aimed at sowing discord and mistrust here in the U.S. Despite the indictment, Uhuru leaders are by no means hiding their ties with Russia. My name is Alexander Uhuru from Moscow. In March 2022, Uhuru leaders held... Boom, we're back. I took a vacation. Now we're back. So yeah, I've been wanting to do this for a minute even before my vacation. And um, yeah, it's kind of crazy because... Uh, with Gazi uh, Kozo, remember Gazi Kozo? I just did a story on da Gazi Kozo. You know the fact that he's like the Joker of Atlanta, and the U.S. Uh, is seeing like a new Gotham kind of arise out of Atlanta. That's like got all these weirdo kind of um, <clears throat> uh, henchmen. You know what I'm saying? Actual villains. Like he kidnapped two people. One of his members was found uh, deceased, you know what I'm saying, to be clear for the algorithms. So, you know, now in that lecture, um, I predicted Russian collusion with Ghazi Kozo because it's like they were sitting there with Russian flags in front of the CNN building, you know what I'm saying, on, on Russia Day. And they were, you know, uh, you know, I had heard about the articles um, um, that the government found, uh, the documents that the government found, um, the U.S. government found documents uh, from Russia um, that I've, uh, I first displayed those in the lecture about the executioners um, and uh, how they had to change their name from the X-Men. Um, you know, I showed the uh, Russian collusion documents about you know, Russian collusion within uh, American media, but also Russian collusion within hip hop. You know, uh, over here at TTM Academy, we're the first to point out this Russian collusion in hip hop. Nobody's been talking about that. You know, we see all the, the negativity and stuff that's happening in hip hop, but, you know, how much of that is actual uh, funded by Moscow to, you know, sow seeds of discord? That's what um, this is all about. 
um, you know, so I've, I've showed that clip multiple, multiple times in at least like three lectures, like the, the Ghazi lecture, uh, definitely the executioner's lecture, and probably even a Rashad Jamal lecture, you know, so we're going to be talking about that too, because remember, <clears throat> TikTok is funded by the CCP, so, you know, there's a lot of communist stuff that's, that's funding, uh, you know, fueling America, um, um, gangster stuff, cold stuff, F-ish, you know what I'm saying, uh, cap, you know what I'm saying, cap tap, you know what I'm saying, that's the, the new stuff is cap tap, you know, cats are just capping, capping, and, uh, they can, uh, you know, preach to their communities and soul sees the discord, you know what I'm saying, you get people, uh, you know, thinking that they can't kidnap their own kids, you know, because like with the Rashad Jamal case, a lot of his fans are like, you can't kidnap your own son, but obviously people can kidnap their own kids. If they don't have full custody, uh, a kid can be kidnapped. So Rashad Jamal is, you know, was, uh, has multiple charges, you know, so, so many charges. And he's got a lot of followers, 100,000 followers, uh, thousands of people supporting him, even though he's on some R. Kelly stuff. But that's, we're going to talk about that in another lecture. We're going to be doing the Planet Nern lecture, lecture, Planet Nern. Uh, all the fake stuff that they've been talking about, you know, ISIS wisdom and R Rashad Jamal, all that uh, Planet Nern, uh, hogwash, that stuff is fake, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, but we're going to talk about the, the roots of Planet Nern and really go deep into that. But this lecture is about uh, Ghazi Kodzo, um, a.k.a. the Joker, the leader of the Black Hammer Party, right? This is the guy that just got arrested, um at the end of last month, and uh, we just covered the story like a week ago, um, and uh, you also see that the T just covered the story, which is kind of interesting because, you know, the T has kind of been complicit in helping uh, Nature Boy uh, get exonerated when, in fact, Nature Boy is, you know, a heinous villain, just like uh, Young Thug, just like Ghazi Kozo, just like Rashad Jamal, so it's like, what's going on in Atlanta? You know, Atlanta, there's, there's all these people reaching you know, they all have at least 100,000 subscribers, maybe Ghazi has the, the least, but, uh, you know, they're all kind of YouTubers, Young Thug's a YouTuber, you know, they're contacting the kids and giving them crazy messages, via, whether they're gangs or, or whatever, they're all using uh, physical abuse and force and coercion and also the R word, the grape word, you know what I'm saying, so we're going to uh, start with this, uh, this, this is, uh, we're going to go over, uh, the old, uh, stuff that I, that I, that shows that I predicted all of this, but I mean, it, it was the elephant in the room, you know, elephant in the room is Russian collusion in hip hop. This is the first instance that we can prove of Russian collusion in hip hop outside of the election, uh, fake pages that were made up. Cause you know, there was a lot of fake, like black, uh, um, political pages that were, uh, created by the Russians uh, during the during the elections, right? But So we're going to start out with this St. Petersburg Police. This was uh, July 29, 2022. So this is the guy's name, uh, Alexander um, Viktorovich Ayanov. Um, he is the one that uh, was paid by the, you know, the Russian spy that was working with a lot of organizations to cause discord in the U.S., uh, he was working with the Black Hammer Party. He he actually paid for their plane tickets to fly to San Francisco for an anti-Ukraine uh, protest. So that's what this uh, lecture is about today. All right. So I'm back from vacation. All right. So let me uh, press play. Good afternoon. St. Petersburg Police Department assisted the FBI serving three search warrants in our city. It is an active in investigation. But here it is that so remember Ghazi's, uh, you know, they, they did a fundraiser in Colorado where they tried to squat on some land and keep the fundraising money. And, you know, they got kicked off that land. Uh, I believe guns were drawn and stuff like that there. You know, they've got uh, outposts in different parts of the country. Good afternoon, we have special agent in, in charge, Mr. Walker, and U.S. Attorney's Office, Mr. Hansberg, that will give you a brief... So Ghazi was arrested in Atlanta synopsis of the case in our city. Mr. Hansberg. Thank you, Chief. And for the sticklers, you know, he was in, uh, he was right outside of Atlanta in Fayette County. 
suburb. On Tuesday, a federal grand jury sitting in Tampa, Florida, returned an indictment charging Russian national Alexander Viktorovich Ianov with conspiring to use several U.S. persons as agents of Russia without prior notification to the Attorney General. As the indictment lays out in great detail, for a period of over seven years, from December of 2014, continuing through July of this year, Ianov and his Russian government co-conspirators engaged in a malign influence campaign to sow discord, spread propaganda, and interfere in elections within the United States, all of which was orchestrated by the Russian Federal Security Service, known as the FSB. The indictment sets out the objectives of this malign influence campaign. Among the foreign policy objectives of Russian government leadership is to expand Russia's sphere of influence. Russia targets the United States and its allies, as well as other countries, to further that goal. Through these influence operations, Russia attempts to shape foreign perceptions. See, I totally predicted all this. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's talking about uh, the Russian stuff in the hip hop. Like, how do we know DJ Vlad's not, not uh, you know, uh, trying to make black people look crazy and and promote the, uh, you know, anarchy in hip hop? You know, that's what it is. When they're talking about uh, a lot of the spy tactics of of the of you know Russians and stuff like espionage, what they're doing is you know they're they're causing. Uh, misinformation and things like that and that's why you know you see like TikTok um a lot of the most popular Rashad Jamal stuff is when he's talking about like aliens and you know you know crazy stuff you know what I'm saying so you know definitely look look at that when you type in Rashad Jamal on TikTok you know you're gonna see his most popular videos are the ones where it's like you know the robots and basically uh the you know tin hat kind of stuff you know what I'm saying all right, so let me, let me continue this. And to influence populations in a number of ways. It seeks to create wedges that reduce trust and confidence in democ uh, democratic processes. It attempts to weaken U.S. partnerships with European allies, to undermine Western sanctions, to encourage anti-U.S. and anti-Western political views, and to counter efforts to bring Ukraine and other former Soviet states into European and international institutions. So this is the first way we know where Ghazi intersects with uh, this guy Ayanov, um, because uh, he, this guy Ayanov paid for the tickets for Ghazi and maybe another couple of members to fly to San Francisco to protest uh, and be pro-Russia in a Ukraine protest. So they flew them. So they have them uh, on that intersection, but we don't know how much more collusion, how long they have been talking, you know, because like I said in my last lecture on uh, Ghazi, um, you know, you can see even just through his YouTube, the, the progression of him going from a blogger to um, to the, the moment that the elections were happening. You can just see that he just began... Um, uh, being super political out of the blue, like he was more of a satire, uh, shock value kind of satirist before, but then you you just saw his progression. So let's let's you know, um, but right when the elections were happening and all the Russian collusion stuff was happening, you know you you see a stark change. So it just to me it was it was a no brainer, and it happened to be right. You know, uh, you know here at TTM Academy in our, our criminology. Um, studies and psychology studies, you know, sometimes we theorize uh, um, motives and, and things like that, you know, when you're dealing with uh, uh, whether it's economics and it's the invisible hand, um, you know, if you're going to Locke, if you're going to all these different older writers, um, even if you go even farther back to, to, to um, you know, Magna Carta type of stuff, you know, um, Law is a very important subject that, you know, is a very important thing in the hip hop community right now, too, since there's so much unlawfulness, you know, and 
you know, star terrain, uh, he actually started the Hip Hop Police. And uh, I'm, you know, not against that type of stuff because, you know, you know, he Star Terrain was one of the guys that got, uh, you know, Bambada uh, broke that story with Bambada. And we're going to be talking about Bambada and stuff, too. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the fake date coming up of the August 11th being the birthday of hip hop, which we know it's not because Herc didn't invent hip hop. Hip hop was invented in Bronxdale projects. And then it went to Bronx River. And then her sister told Herc about hip hop. Cause she was going to all the parties and then you know herc started up some parties in his house i mean his building his his upper like upper class building it wasn't the projects the hip-hop started in the projects by by use and they're all still alive because they were kids when they started it but uh yeah so as far as russian collusion you know spreading uh, disinformation we don't know how long this has been going on we know it's been going on during the election since the elections but, you know, who's to say that 90s gangster rap or, or whatever didn't have something to do with that type of stuff or or you, you never know, because uh, they say that a lot of the Russian uh, government's uh, military funding is on misinformation and collusion versus physical things. To achieve those objectives, Russia influence operations often use social media targeted at U.S. and global audiences to sow discord and mistrust in the United States and other countries' political systems. This social media results in the dissemination of disinformation that is intended to confuse and mislead citizens in the United States, in Europe, and even in Russia itself, as well as to recruit U.S. persons to advance Russia's operational goals. Recru recruitment is an important and essential part of these efforts. Russia has recruited and forged ties with persons and groups around the world who are positioned to amplify and reinforce Russia's messaging campaigns in furtherance of its goals of destabilizing Western societies. These efforts have included the use of organizations to surreptitiously seek access to people in the United States and elsewhere to advance and promote Russian interest. So we can see right here, Uhuru House investigation. So you can see this is also connected with, you know, Dead Prez being on the Uhuru tip. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, uh, you know, I, I have an ex, she used to, you know, try to take me to Uhuru marches back in the day when I was in college. I didn't even know what people were doing. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, I'm not with all that, that communist stuff. Because if you go, you know, the history of of uh, communism, uh, they've always been trying to uh, recruit black folks from whether it was the swing era all the way to now where it's the hip hop music. You know what I'm saying? So we don't know uh, how long they've been trying to spread disinformation within, uh, within hip hop culture because we know uh, we only know this so far. This is, you know, this is a real big breaking story. You know what I'm saying? This is a very, you know, and political science wise, this is very, a very important uh, uh, series of arrests because this is proving that, you know, actual culture can be manipulated by foreign um, counterintelligence. You know what I'm saying? Foreign uh, spies and foreign, uh, you know, uh, whether they're nationals or people living here, like they just caught that couple that were spies, uh, I believe from Russia, here in America, that, that had been living here. Um, they had uh, slain some people and, you know, they were agents and they were living like regular Americans for like decades, you know, and they finally caught them here. Um, there was an interesting movie in the 80s, I forget what it was called, but uh, where they flew these guys to this town and they thought they were in uh, America, but it was actually in Russia. But they made the town to look like it was uh, America. But, uh, you know, um, that was just a, just an interesting movie in the 80s. Because in the 80s, there was a lot of, you know, the, the Red Scare was still alive. And there was a lot of tension within media as far as the Russians being the bad guys. But, you know, those things kind of trickled down and people kind of got into the Russian... Uh, billionaire thing and you know models and you know Russia R Russia has been painted in a very good light uh, by a lot of people uh, uh, until the war really started you know what I'm saying but uh, for those of us who've always seen through uh, 
the negative things that Russia has always been doing, you know, whether we're going from, you know, Stalin to 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 now to um, Putin, you know, it's it's very, very clear, you know, they've been on some uh, uh, negativity. That is what is alleged to have happened in the case that was unsealed earlier today. Everything that I've just covered is alleged in the indictment that was returned by the Tampa grand jury. The indictment is 24 pages. It details a conspiracy that occurred over the course of seven years. It sets out over 50 specific acts committed by conspirators in furtherance of the conspiracy. In particular, the indictment sets out several examples of how Ionov, under the supervision of the Russian FSB, directed and controlled the activities of three U.S. political groups, including one right here in St. Petersburg, Florida, another in Atlanta, Georgia, and a third in Sacramento, California. Ionov's taskings to these political groups included the filing of petitions with the United Nations, the promotion of separatist and secessionist movements, the funding of protests to create tor turmoil within the United States, and the publishing of pro-Russia propaganda. When you're starting a business, every dollar counts. Two further examples of malign foreign influence relate to local elections here in St. Petersburg, Florida. In 2017, Ianoff extended an offer of support and assistance to a St. Petersburg candidate for local office, including offering campaign finance. In 2019, Ianoff stepped up his efforts to interfere in St. Petersburg, Florida elections, reporting to the FSB that he had been consulting with a candidate every week and that he had personally sent money to the can campaign as well as participated in a campaign fundraising event. Ianoff provided the FSB with a video of the local candidate delivering a campaign speech, and he reported on the percentage of votes the candidate received for the primary election. In September of 2019, Ianoff's FSB handler referred to the candidate's campaign as our election campaign and Ianoff referred to the candidate as the candidate whom we supervise. So y'all see that? Y'all see that? So the FSB is paying Ianoff, and Ianoff is working with Ghazi Kozo. And for those who don't know who Ghazi Kozo is, if you're just finding out about this story through some other keyword or something right now, we're, we'll go to actual uh, where Ghazi Kozo is. So for those that don't know, this is Ghazi Kozo, the head of the Ghazi cult. So he's the one that's colluding with Enoch. This is the Joker that I was telling you about. Hello, Antifa. You're it's me, Ghazi, the commander-in-chief of the Black Hero Organization. Land back! Land back! Land back! Land back! I heard you had some not so nice things to say about me. I heard you had some nice things to say about my handlers. So the Russians were paying this dude to to be, you know, pro, have like pro uh, anti Ukraine protests. You know what I'm saying? They're doing anti Ukraine protests. You know, um, you know they're they're on that whole kind of pro, uh, you know, squad on land stuff, and. Uh, uh, you know, I'm not even going to say the algorithm where that, that's connected to. But, uh, yeah, so the, the, these guys uh, are total, this guy's a total madman, and the Russians have been paying this guy to be the Joker, right? Uh, I you had but also notice that it, it is important to notice that Ghazi and Young Thug, remember Young Thug? There was that video where, uh, you know, his homies were watching... Uh, you know, uh, male uh, adult stuff, you know, in the background. So we know um, that Young Thug, 
uh, Nature Boy and Gazi Kozo are all part of the uh, Jussie Smollett movement, not as just far as uh, the mixed messages, but just more of the uh, orientation of that movement. Okay, uh, to put it um, in context, because you know, because Atlanta is the is the capital. It's becoming like a, a you know, a Smollett Gotham. You know, because Atlanta is really getting like a Gotham now, where we've got all these people with different, these different like, uh, you know, kind of outfits like you know like these guys are characters it's like what's up with that that's kind of weird right that got the joker we got you know let me let me pull this picture up let me see this picture like this picture right here we got this picture of uh of young thug right and then we got the joker you know what i'm saying it's like young thug is clearly like you know what i'm saying these are comic book characters you know what i'm saying these guys are literally act and they're literally you know our super villains like you know a rico charged with 28 people being arrested and they've been t tapping his phone for for uh mad long that's that's pretty crazy you know what i'm saying and then you got uh you know nature boy you know what i'm saying like like this and they're and they're they're on the the small a tip, you know what I'm saying? They're 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 all part of the, the same kind of small a culture, and they're spreading misinformation like small a. So what's up with that? You know what I'm saying? Is small a being paid by Russians? You know, has anybody? I don't know, anybody brought that up? But let's let's go back. Let's get back to where we were. Nice things to do to one of my members. A young man found dead inside a Fayetteville home after Rewind. someone calls 911 saying that they were being held hostage and police showed up to investigate. The question now is who fired the shot that killed the man? A lot of the lives Doug Richards as live for us this evening in that neighborhood. Right. <coughs> All right, so let's, let's get back to where we just were. Ian Off and the FSB continue to use these political groups to spread. So that, that's Ghazi. That's Commander Ghazi. For those that don't know who Ghazi is, you know, he's uh, uh, he just got arrested for kidnapping and aggravated SOD OMY. And uh, he also uh, aggravated assault as well. And, um, you know, they had this guy, these two guys locked in a garage. You know, they were, you know, a cult, you know, they, that's what he calls it, the Ghazi cult with this uh, cult within the Black Hammer Party, you know, and the Black Hammer Party is the one that's connected to uh, Uhuru and the FBI uh, stuff that's going down right now with uh, the uh, Russian collusion. Russian propaganda in the wake of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. On February 24th of this year, the same day that Russia announced its invasion of the Ukraine, Ionov Ianov reached out to leaders of the St. Petersburg group to inform them of the invasion. Ianov later told the FSB that he had asked the St. Petersburg group for assistance in the information war unleashed by the West. On more than one occasion, the St. Petersburg group hosted Ianov via video conference to discuss the invasion in front of an American audience. During these conferences, Ianov spread Russia propaganda falsely stating that anyone who supported Ukraine also supported Nazism and white supremacy. In March of this year, Ianoff used an Atlanta-based group to launch a protest against an American social media company that had placed content restrictions on posts supporting Russia's invasion of Ukraine. All right, so we're going to pull that up. So let's see. I got it on one of these screens. There we go. So you see uh, Russian national charged with conspiring with left wing groups to act as illegal agents of the Russian government. So, you know, you see my my uh, story we did uh, theorizing, you know, uh, political uh, outcomes. Um, we predicted correctly. Right. So. Uh, so it says uh, Kozo second from the left, posing with other black camera members. And also, it's important to note that the Black Hammer is referring to his uh, 
his member because he, you know, in, in his Joker routine, uh, we showed in, in the previous lecture about this guy uh, that he was, you know, swinging it in, in these performance art type things. You know, so you can see that they're paying, you know, as part of the uh, uh, the the culture t for uh, different governments to actually uh, pay for, um, you know, things that are happening within political, not only political movements, but also the art world as well. Um, as we know, the uh, CIA back in the day actually helped um, the American abstract artists, um, you know, get bigger than Kandinsky and the Russians that were blowing up, you know, because the Russian, you know, abs Kandinsky, you know, set off the abstract stuff. But, uh, you know, Kandinsky, who was a former lawyer, lawyer we don't know if he was a spy or not. Um, <coughs> but we do know that Theremin was involved in a lot of uh, spy stuff, you know what I'm saying? You know, Theremin, I'm pretty sure, disappeared. You know, they, they re-kidnapped him and took him back to Russia. Um, but we're going to get into a lot of Theremin studies uh, in the future with, you know, Theremin music. It's one of my favorite instruments, especially controlling Theremins with uh, turntables, you know, using the Theremin to actually uh, control a control voltage signal to be able to uh, scratch and play melody at the same time. You know, you can use your elbow to control the theremin while you're scratching. You know, we're going we're gonna to be, uh, we've got a lot, a lot of gems coming up in the future. But, uh, yeah, back to politics. Um, so, yeah, now you, you see, like I was saying, so um, this this cult right here, uh, they uh, the core members are a part of the cult. This guy here with the blonde hair is the one that you saw in the news being taken down. He had a gun on him uh, uh, when uh, the cops arrested him. Ghazi didn't have a gun on him when he got arrested. All right, so let's let's read this real quick. So, the Department of Justice has just charged Russian national Alexander Viktorovic Ianov with working on behalf of the Russian government and enlisting left-wing political groups to act on behalf of the Russian government in a years-long campaign of malign influence. The statement of the DOJ is published below in its entirety. And an indictment was unsealed today in Tampa, Florida, charging a Russian national working on behalf of the Russian government and in conjunction with the Russian Federal Security Service, FSB, with allegedly um, orchestrating a years-long foreign malign influence campaign that used various U.S. political groups to sow discord, spread pro-Russian propaganda, and interfere in elections within the United States. And let's go back to the, the lecture from before. Because in the lecture from before, I brought that whole thing up. So I'm going to play this again. Tonight, new evidence suggests Russian efforts to meddle in American society stretch beyond elections. Documents seen exclusively by NBC News appear to show another... So this is from 2019. So as soon as this came out, I've been talking about like, well, we know that Russians were including the elections, but... You know, this sounds like just like how, you know, they say Africa Bambada went to Africa before he came to the U.S. and started Zulu Nation. And in this document, they actually talk about, you know, training people, training Americans in Africa, you know, um, and sending them back to the U.S., you know. So let me play that. So we do we know if Bambada is involved with the Russians? We don't know. You know, hip hop's is very, very popular in Russia. Shout out to the Chin Machine. Another bizarre campaign to sow unrest in the U.S. No peace. Russian operatives last year pitched a plot to manipulate African Americans. One especially disturbing proposal suggests recruiting African Americans with criminal records, giving them sabotage training at camps in Africa, and returning them to the U.S. And we're also going to be doing a story, uh, you know, about ISIS wisdom, Rashad Hayes, and and nature boy and all these you know Atlanta, i mean all these you know uh kind of faux tep uh i'm saying faux as in fake or cap you know cap as in a lie cap tep you know um kind of youtube lecturers that are just like talking about all this wild stuff you know a lot of people are um uh you know coming from you know extreme criminal records and stuff like that um and it, it is it's very very interesting because uh you know it's just a lot of gangsterism going on within uh, the hotel community and people, you know, strong arming people and, and uh, you know, because a lot of people's fans, you know, they meet the person in real life and 
They're like, oh, yeah, that person scammed me or, you know, strong arm me or, you know, even with polite. You know, we're going to be talking about polite stuff in the future, you know, because uh, shout out to Uma Kahir York. You know, she's one of the actresses in my film, um, Skater Girl, my first full length. And she's actually basically, you know, her, her and her brother got their life threatened by uh, polite, you know. And uh, so we're going to be going into polite, you know, because he ties in all this, too, you know, as far as uh, protecting the, the children. You know what I'm saying? But uh, let's see. Another proposal encouraging African-Americans to push for independent statehood in the South. It does not surprise me at all the extent to which Russia would go to undermine our democracy and really target divisions that already exist within our country. The documents were found in communications between Russians linked to Yevgeny Prigozhin, a catering magnate dubbed Putin's chef, indicted by Robert Mueller for trying to sway the 2016 election. While NBC News cannot independently verify the documents, they were uncovered by an investigative Russian opposition group called the Dossier Center, which, in the past, has revealed authentic material to us. Our adversary is coming at us. We should expect it to happen now leading up to the 2020 election. And these documents indicate we're going to see it on steroids. While there's no indication the plans were more than aspirational, bipartisan members of Congress were so troubled they plan to introduce a bill to guard against these and other potential Russian plots. So boom, and we see that it happened, right? So let's go back. Right. So that was 2019. This is now. Because ever since I saw that, I was like, whoa, you know, um, I mean, I already knew cats were, uh, you know, on that tip. But, uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Ianoff paid for members of that group to travel from Atlanta to San Francisco to protest at the headquarters of that company where they carried a Russian flag and signs designed by Ianoff. Everything that I've just covered is alleged in the indictment. And those are just some of the allegations contained in the indictment. Wow, so so Ianov actually designed the signs. Like, let's see. I click back. Identified is in custody, so. Let's see, where's the signs? Let's find, oh, they're gonna make it. Could you please tell us who you are? We so, are from so. mostly planets. Xavier. All right, so let's see. I'm gonna go where they actually uh, get the signs in front of the CNN building. Let's see, I think it was towards the end. But yeah, we're gonna keep this lecture kind of short. But who knows? Let's see. There we go. The scene Imprisonment of black and brown people. So you see that. So this is what they're talking about. He's saying, uh, you know, I've paid for this this flag and also some whatever signs they had. But they didn't do this. This wasn't the one in San Francisco. This is here in Atlanta. But they had them, uh, you know, do a thing, uh, anti-Ukraine thing in San Francisco. There's pictures of that, too. But let's keep playing this. The prosecution of this type of criminal conduct is essential to protecting the American public when foreign governments seek to inject themselves into the American political system. The indictment in this case reflects the excellent work and partnership of several components of the United States Department. Remember, this dude is wearing a Joker mask. You know what I'm saying? Like, the guy, the guy that this guy is talking about is wears a joker mask and has a legion of joker henchmen that's why i'm saying atlanta is like the small a gotham right now at this point and of justice the prosecution team includes prosecutors from the justice department's counterintelligence and export control section and the public integrity section as well as prosecutors from my office the investigation is being led by the federal bureau of investigation also, it's important to note that uh, you remember uh, Grandmaster Flash had a restraining order against uh, the rest of the Furious Five, and I believe other oh, Furious Five, uh, Kid Creole, just uh, you know, 
is in jail for he stabbed a homeless guy to death. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and he didn't know he was on video. You know, there's, there's a lot of uh, people, uh, criminals that get away with stuff like that for years. A lot of homeless people, you know, uh, get taken out for no reason, just like Clockwork Orange. You know, so it's very, very interesting. Uh, you know, there's a lot of crime involved in hip hop, you know, at the top level, bottom level, underground, all, all different levels. There's a, a lot of different types of crime going on. But now we can see that some of this crime and some of the mayhem is being, uh, you know, funded by Russians, you know. Which has conducted a thorough and meticulous investigation. On behalf of the United States Attorney's Office, I want to thank and commend the Counterintelligence and Export Control Section, the Public Integrity Section, and the FBI for their outstanding teamwork and partnership on this investigation. I also want to thank Chief Holloway and the St. Petersburg Police Department. We are honored to have Chief Holloway. I don't think they have uh, specific charges on him yet, on Ghazi um, with this guy, but he's connected. You know, they have him as being connected with it, and he's listed in all the all the statements because he was arrested for something totally different you know he was arrested for for kidnapping you know he had two guys kidnapped and and uh they did aggravated s-o-d-o-m-y you know on those two people and uh you know uh or at least one of them of, of the two captives and the, you know they were able to call the police and, and get out of there you know um but that was when they raided the whole uh compound and and found one of their members uh slain with us at this press conference today and thank him and his police department for their help today but this investigation is not and it's also interesting how they didn't arrest him right away you know i feel like they kind of gave him a jesse smollett kind of card and kind of let him off and then they arrested him later that day you know i think it was very pertinent to note from my last lecture that if you watch that you'll notice that uh, the one i just showed the excerpt of you'll notice that they didn't uh you know, he got to talk to the news at the beginning, like he was a victim. Not over. It is ongoing. Because it's like, how, how often do you see the person that's the actual henchman talk to the news as if they're the, as if they're the victim, you know? Because, you know, other cats, they wouldn't let them do that. But him, I feel like, you know, he probably just came out outside, you know, to the front at the beginning. And uh, they gave him that, that particular type of uh, benefit of the doubt that the Jesse Smollett uh, sphere verse, I guess, uh, you know, gives people the benefit of the doubt. Federal search warrants are being executed today at multiple locations. Once that evidence is collected, the FBI will continue with its investigation and its thorough and meticulous review of the evidence. And my office and the other prosecutors on the case will do what we've already been doing on this case, which is we're gonna work with our partners at the FBI to investigate these events and to continue to follow the evidence where it takes us. I'm now gonna turn it over to FBI Special Agent in Charge, David Walker, who's gonna talk about some law enforcement operations today. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'd like to start off by thanking uh, U.S. Attorney Hanberg and Chief Holloway for their efforts today. Uh, DOJ and the city of St. Peter Petersburg Police have been essential partners and cornerstones in this investigation. I'm David Walker. I'm special agent in charge of the Tampa field office. The FBI is a lead agency. All right, so let's let's finish uh, reading this this thing right here. All right, uh, let's see. So, as alleged in the indictment, from at least December 20, 2014 until March twenty twenty two, Alexander um, uh, Ayanov, a resident of Moscow, together with at least three Russian officials engaged in a years-long foreign malign influence campaign targeting the United States. Ayanov is the founder and president of the Anti-Globalization Movement of Russia, the AGMR, an organization headquartered in Moscow and funded by the Russian government. Ayanov utilized AGMR to carry out Russia's influence campaign. 
Ayanov allegedly orchestrated a brazen influence campaign turning U.S. political groups and U.S. citizens into instruments of the Russian government, said Assistant Attorney General Matthew G. Olson of the Justice Department's National Security Division. The Department of Justice will not allow Russia to unlawfully sow division and spread misinformation inside the United States. According to the indictment, Ainov, working under the supervision of the FSB and with the Russian government's support, recruited political groups within the United States, including U.S. Political Group 1 in Florida, U.S. Political Group 2 in Georgia, right, that's Black Hammer, and U.S. Political Group 3 in California. And, and Black Hammer might have linked up with number three because, you know, they flew to California and exercised direction or control over them on behalf of the FSB. Specifically, Ayanov provided financial support to these groups, directed them to publish pro-Russian propaganda, coordinated and funded direct action by these groups with the United States intended to further Russian interests and coordinated coverage of this activity in Russian media outlets. All right. Ayanov also relayed detailed information about this influence campaign to three FSB officials. So he was clearly a spy. It wasn't just like uh, a Russian company sent them some money. You know what I'm saying? Uh, right. So, you know, let's let's move on to the um, to, to, to the actual guy speaking on it. Responsible for investigating malign foreign influence operations. The facts and circumstances surrounding this indictment are some of the most egregious and blatant violations we've seen by the Russian government in order to destabilize and undermine trust in American democracy. This indictment is just the first of our responses, but it will not be our last, and our investigation is continuing. In furtherance of this current Russian influence investigation, we executed three search warrants today in the city of St. Petersburg. Our efforts were not aimed at any specific group, organization, or ideology. The primary purpose of this morning's action was to collect evidence in support of this indictment and future indictments. This is a sensitive ongoing investigation, so we cannot provide any further details about today's operation. The FBI's mission is to protect the American people and uphold the U.S. Constitution. We're also committed to, pro to protecting your voice, and we will utilize our resources our partnerships and global reach to identify foreign adversaries here in this country trying to cut, create divide, separate this country, and have contempt for democracy. The Russian intelligence threat is continuous and, and unrelenting. But rest assured, the FBI and our law enforcement partners are equally as relentless in our efforts to expose these criminal campaigns interfering with the safety and security of our nation. Today's action should serve as a deterrent to other foreign adversaries that the FBI will not tolerate meddling in our democratic process. The FBI is prepared to identify and counter malign force influence operations targeting the United States. Thank you. With that, we'll open for any questions. Well, I, I, I'm sorry, because of the ongoing nature of this investigation, we're not going to be able to take questions now, but we thank you for your interest. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. All right, boom. So let's, let's click back. So you see that was that one. Uh, let's see. We just saw that. That was 14 minutes. These other ones are just shorter. Uh, but let's let's look at this. This is important. It's also important to note that when the T just did their uh, did their article on the story, uh, the way that it's cut and edited, um, you, it's kind of confusing uh, to know that he is the uh, the the villain in the case. You know what I'm saying? Um, they kind of lead you to believe that you know, maybe, uh, he's innocent or something, you know, and that's how I feel like they're, they're kind of playing with nature boy where they're kind of, uh, you know, they're against him, but they're not showing all the evidence, you know, they're, they're showing the stuff with, uh, you know, that, that, that clip that, uh, 
uh, True and them are trying to use against Janae, you know, um, stuff like that. They're being wishy-washy um, with uh, the whole Nature Boy thing. So it's like, if you're being wishy-washy with Justice, that means you're kind of playing both sides, which is like being kind of like a double agent, which uh, I'm, not, I'm against. I'm against uh, people being double agents. And that's what Kozo was doing because he was, you know, trying to act like he's for uh, his people, but really he's being paid by a uh, force that's not for their people, you know, because, you know, Russia's very, very racist in Russia, you know what I'm saying, like, people, you know, um, it's very, very racist in Russia, uh, but yeah, let's, let's play this. We have a news alert that we're staying on top of. Earlier this morning, we watched as FBI agents uh, went through the Yuhuru house in St. Pete, uh, the Yuhuru house, which is the Florida-based headquarters of a black international socialist group. We just heard moments ago from investigators, from St. Pete police, from the FBI, and of course the U.S. attorney, and we were told uh, by these individuals uh, when it comes to this investigation that um, they they are looking at another investigation into a Russian national who was charged with conspiring to have U.S. citizens act as illegal agents of the Russian government. Earlier this week, a grand jury returned an indictment charging a man named Alexander Viktorovich Ianov. They say that uh, they, between 2014 and March of this year, he worked with at least three Russian officials to influence elections. A member with the Yahuru group did confirm. Remember, this is just one guy out of many, many, you know, they've got all types of operatives, you know, uh, the CCP does too, you know, because most, uh, the majority of people that are uh, Chinese actually are, are part of the, uh, the CCP's party. And when you're part of that party, you're technically, you know, you have to do what they say as, as being an operative. Because a lot of times in China, they'll tell people, you know, they'll do something to their family if they don't do what uh, they say. And with uh, the jab stuff, actually, uh, it, people came to find that, you know, a lot of people that had access to labs and stuff were trying to put antibodies in, in uh, falsely put antibodies in stuff, uh, samples in places in America to make it seem like uh, it was already happening before uh, before Wuhan and stuff like that. But that's, you know, all that, those stories are coming out too. But uh, yeah, so let's play this. Confirmed to us earlier today that she believed investigators were looking into the Uhuru's relationship with Russian forces. Now, this is a complicated case. We've broken it down for you. We have that information on 10 no matter which European city is on your list. All right, so let's let's go to the next one. So we saw that, and this other one is like a mix of the story. And the, let's see. And as we come on the air, we are staying on top of developments in a major investigation involving a local group. The U.S. Department of Justice is investigating a Saint Petersburg-based political group for allegedly working with Russia to interfere in U.S. elections. A Tampa, a Tampa based grand jury charged a Russian national with spearheading an influence campaign to spread pro Russian propaganda. 10 Tampa Bay reporter Liz Crawford has been covering this all day for us. And Liz, the indictment details a conspiracy dating all the way back to 2014. Yes, several years there, Courtney. I have a copy of the indictment. It's 24 pages long. It cites 50 examples of a Russian national working with U.S. political groups to push a conspiracy. Now, a U.S. attorney held a news conference here today at St. Petersburg Police headquarters to explain why FBI agents raided three different locations within the city of St. Pete. Now, he said a Russian national faces a charge of conspiring to have U.S. citizens act as illegal agents of the Russian government. The FBI confirmed it had raided the Ahuru house in South St. Pete as part of this investigation. Early Friday morning, agents were there carrying out boxes, and a leader with the movement told me they took her phone and computer. U.S. government officials allege a Russian national recruited and used political groups in Georgia, California, and the Ahuru movement in Florida to publish pro-Russian propaganda and coordinate action to further Russian interests. That is intended to confuse and mislead citizens in the United States, in Europe, and even in Russia itself. 
as well as to recruit U.S. persons to advance Russia's operational goals. Now, members of the Uhuru movement showed up to police headquarters today eager to share their side of the story. One of their leaders said the group stands for the total and complete liberation of African people. I spoke with her one-on-one -on -one earlier today. Does the Uhuru movement have a relationship with any government, any party in Russia? We are able to have relationships with any forces who can unite with the anti-colonial struggle. So right, she sounds crazy. <laughs> She's like, any forces? What are you talking about? You, you know, you're saying, you know, it's like, just like we see uh, China is in league with the Taliban. You know what I'm saying? That's why China's going down. China's going down. Russia's going down. I I'm telling you, at least two years, three years from now, just like how, uh, you know, USSR got restructured and turn to Russia, they're going to have to restructure Russia and the CCP because they're tripping right now. You know, the whole the whole area, women aren't even safe to walk the streets in India. Women cannot walk the streets, can, can't get on a bus. I don't even mention what I don't even want to mention what happens to women when they go on buses alone in India. You know, they're not even safe from the bus drivers. That's how crazy India is right now. So it's like, in my opinion, you know, that world side of the world is 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 having to uh you know, is going to be going through some major uh, restructuring civilization wise and ha going to have to step it up. So she's tripping. This woman's tripping. Talking about anybody. That's stupid to say that. So any force out there in the world that unites with the anti-colonial struggle, we pursue a relationship with unapologetically. Now, despite many questions from reporters today, she never did deny or confirm having relationships with Russian nationals. Now, a special agent in charge here said that Russia is relentless in their attempts to undermine U.S. democracy, but he said the FBI is relentless in their efforts to stop it. This investigation is ongoing. Boom. So, yeah, that's it. You know, so, you know, I literally... Um, uh, am shocked uh, that uh, that prediction was so on point because uh, you know we theorize a lot of different things and uh, you know but this was just like an elephant in the room it's like they're literally in front of the CNN building with the Russian flag I'm like obviously this is probably related to that article from 2019 and that's what all I was saying you know what I'm saying as far as collusion but uh, you know because everybody was just equating collusion with all the Trump stuff but people aren't really looking at the greater scheme of the collusion like how is the Russian collusion affecting the black community we know they're trying to sow discord in the black community and all different types of communities Russian I mean American society in general Russia's trying to sow discord right so it's just like um, if you really really think about it how far does this go back you know does it go back to the gangster rap era you know that, that famous meeting that, that Kwame talks about, and a, and a lot of people say that, you know, the, the school to prison pipeline via rap meeting that they had in, uh, in the early 90s, you know, uh, does Russian collusion go that far back? You know, how far back does it go? You know, uh, and yeah, and once again, you know, uh, to all the Rashad Jamal fans that have uh, accused me of being an agent, I did work for the U.S. Department of State's Next Level program uh, teaching uh, scratch notation and turntablism in Cartagena, uh, Colombia, you know, spreading American culture to, uh, which, which is hip hop now. Hip hop is American culture, you know, and, uh, um, you know, I, I help, uh, spread that, uh, in, uh, Cartagena, uh, bringing, uh, turntablism to the youth there. We gave them a free copy of Serato. And on another note, for those of y'all that are curious, I, I don't even use Serato. Serato even wouldn't, wouldn't even give me a free copy. We, you know, I gave a free copy uh, through the Department of State to the to the kids in Cartagena. They gave us one free copy, of the, but they wouldn't get Serato wouldn't give me a free copy, which is very very interesting. You know that the uh, me as the inventor of scratch notation not getting a free copy of uh, of uh, Serato. You know, so I've I'm, I'm still uh, you know using the same wax from the '90s and early 2000s uh people don't really send me provos but shout out to cut and paste you know they send me promos uh shout out to scratch lords you know i got their uh uh cassette tape and my uh, cassette collection uh, i just found a bunch of my father's old cassettes that i can't wait to listen to um but yeah so you know as far as all this stuff with, with the ghazi cult 
Um, we're we're going to wrap things up and just look at this article right here. Uh, so the United States Department of Justice, Russian national charged with conspiring to have U.S. citizens act as the legal agents of the Russian government. Um, an indictment was unsealed today. Um, all right, so we, yeah, we, we saw most of this before, but if you just want to look at this, you know, it, it, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty clear what happened, right? It's pretty clear that Ghazi, that madman Ghazi, is clearly, uh, you know, being funded by, uh, by the Russians, you know? necessary because you know and they're trying to go against antifa and you know um all that type of stuff but uh and look at this you know, you know that's so probably what makes even with a lot of the blm type of stuff we don't even know if blm is colluding with uh russia you know what i'm saying you see this he's like you know afro witch you know what i'm saying this is russian people the russian is russians are telling them to do this stuff you know what i'm saying and they they think uh russia's uh like some kind of bastion of freedom. These people have probably never even been there. You know what I'm saying? Um, which is just kind of sad. You know what I'm saying? That that uh, you know, even with the the the, the fist, you know, uh, uh, brother Sears has always been pointing out that the the whole fist thing comes from the the Russian fist. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, the the Black Power Movement fist didn't invent the whole Black Fist. You know. But, uh, you know, I just got my son an Afro pick with the fist on it. So, you know, I think the symbols could change and stuff, too. But but obviously it re he's right on that. I see he's totally right in the, about the fact that the black power fist, you know, uh, kind of came up after years and years of, of uh, you know, communist uh, fist, you know, the worker fist. Right. And uh, you see that Ghazi was using that fist in his own... Uh, um, let's see, is it right here in his own flags and all that type of stuff? But yeah, there's a lot of information on this, you know, out here. Uh, you can see this Russian operative used U.S. activist groups to spread propaganda, Fed say, right? And activist groups and, uh, you know, overlap with, uh, you know, nonprofits and community people trying to act like they're trying to help people, just like we know with Haiti. You know, they brought cholera back to Haiti and, and they didn't even, uh, the UN uh, was, you know, hurting kids and, and the UN was doing all types of crazy stuff. You know, they caught their soldiers doing all types of crazy stuff. And then the, remember with the, the floods and stuff, or I guess the hurricane, whatever, in Haiti, no, it was the earthquake. Yeah, the earthquake. They were supposed to be building all these homes. They didn't build the homes. They just kept all the money. So it's just like a lot of these groups, a lot of these uh, activist groups, uh, do just as much as dirt as uh, uh, any other company, you know what I'm saying, if not more. The FBI is investigating a connection between a Russian national and a social activist group here in St. Pete, alleging that the Russian leader tried to interfere with local elections and spread Russian propaganda. ABC Action News reporter Sarah Hollenbeck explains what they're investigating. FBI agents spent hours Friday going in and out of the Uhuru House on 18th Avenue South in St. Pete, executing a search warrant. Though the group is not named in this indictment, St. Pete police tell us the search is tied to a Russian national named Alexander Ionov and his involvement in meddling in U.S. politics and influence right here in St. Pete. The facts and circumstances surrounding this indictment are some of the most egregious and blatant violations we've seen by the Russian government in order to destabilize and undermine trust in American democracy. Ionov is the founder of the anti-globalization movement of Russia, which FBI agents say is funded by the Russian government. Federal agents say the case unfolded over a seven-year period, and Ionov invested in a political candidate running for election in St. Pete. Ionov's FSB handler referred to the candidate's campaign as our election campaign and Ianoff referred to the candidate as the candidate whom we supervise. Although her name is not listed in the indictment, Akila Nai with the Uhura Movement and African People's Socialist Party says she is the candidate the ref and It's important to note that even, you know, Uhuru is actually run by Europeans. I believe uh, um, maybe of the three people that run it, one person is a uh, uh, black person. I, I think the other two people are of European Americans. Referring to, and she sees nothing wrong with aligning with... When I'm saying black, I'm talking about caste. 
like the black cast, like I'm part of the black, uh, you know, Pacific Islander, you know, Afro cast. Russia. And we can have relationships with whoever we want, see whoever we see fit possible to make this revolution possible. We will have a relationship with them. The FBI says Ayanov used U.S. citizens to spread propaganda. I mean, obviously she's totally crazy because it's like you can't just, you know, that's sedition. You know what I'm saying? Sedition is illegal to be, uh, you know what I'm saying, actively being like uh, saying that they're just going to, you know, talk to the Taliban, talk to ISIS, talk to or whoever, you know, she's tripping. Propaganda uh, and inflame political divisions, including trying to influence how Americans feel about the war with Ukraine. If Russia is against world colonial powers and we support Russia. The FBI says their investigation will continue. The Russian intelligence threat is continuous and, and unrelenting. But rest assured, the FBI and our law enforcement partners are equally as relentless in our efforts to expose these criminal campaigns interfering with the safety and security of our nation. In St. Petersburg, Sarah Hollenbeck, ABC Action News. This is the biggest day of my life. This man just stole something from... All right, so let's go to the next one. Those, that, those uh, things had a Russian accent. All right, let's hit the next one up. This is Good the afternoon. News. St. Petersburg Police Department assisted the FBI serving three search warrants in our city. It is an active investigation. But here this afternoon, we have... Special Agent in, in Charge, Mr. Walker, and U.S. Attorney's Office, Mr. Hansberg, that will give you a brief synopsis of the case in our city. Mr. Hansberg. Thank you, Chief. Yo, and we're also going to be talking about, uh, uh, I'm going to, we already played this. This is just ABC playing what he said. But, yeah, I'm going to run it back to the other article. Um, but, yeah, we also uh, are going to be talking about uh, you know, more updates with the Rashad Jamal case. Uh, they just found, uh, they just arrested two officers in his building, bringing con in his uh, prison building, his uh, his jail building, I'm sorry, the jailhouse. Uh, there, uh, the two guards just got arrested uh, in this past week, bringing in contraband. But we don't know if, uh, you know, he got any of that contraband, but uh, I'm not sure even if they're divulging what the contraband was. I believe the GBI, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, might have arrested the uh, the uh, corrections officers that were bringing in the contraband. But, uh, yeah, that just happened in Barrow County. But we're, we'll be talking about that in the Planet Nern uh, debunk lecture. All right, so let's uh, click back. We already saw him uh, talk in his speech. Um, let's see. FBI, let's see. So this is Fox. Good evening and welcome here on this Friday. I'm Mark Wilson. And I'm Allie Corey. Thanks for being with us. First at 10, Russian collusion in our own backyard. A federal indictment says Russia wanted to cause political turmoil in the U.S. and found a willing partner in a group based in St. Pete. The indictment describes a conspiracy of propaganda, misinformation campaigns, and direct meddling in local elections that began years ago. The indictment doesn't identify the local group by name, but all evidence points to St. Pete's Uhuru House. And today, the Uhuru all but confirmed it. Fox 13's Haley Hines is here tonight with more for us. Haley. Haley, the indictment says that for more than seven years, Russia targeted the United States to carry out this influence campaign. It says they recruited three political groups, one believed to be Uhuru in St. Pete. They helped fund the group's political campaigns and flew its leader to Russia to form a partnership aimed at sowing discord and mistrust here in the U.S. Despite the indictment, Uhuru leaders are by no means hiding their ties with Russia. My name is Alexander Ilona from Moscow. In March 2022, Uhuru leaders held... You see what I'm saying? Like, you know, the DJ Vlad ties, we don't even know. Is DJ Vlad, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I know DJ Vlad's, you know, not from uh, uh, the full Russia now. As we know it now, but you know DJ Vlad's from that region. You know what I'm saying, and and I'm just talking about in general, people that are, uh, you know, painting hip hop in a negative light. You know, where is their funding coming from? You know what I'm saying? 
held online discussions with the president of the Moscow-based anti-globalization movement of Russia. With help from a translator, the FBI says he spread Russian propaganda. Western propaganda is lying. Uh, when they say that uh, Russia has invaded uh, Ukraine. This week, that man was indicted by a federal grand jury in Tampa with conspiring to use a number of U.S. citizens as agents of Russia. The facts and circumstances surrounding this indictment are some of the most egregious and blatant violations we've seen by the Russian government in order to destabilize and undermine trust in American democracy. The FBI alleges from December 2014 through March of this year, Alexander Ayanov was actively working to sow discord, spread Russian propaganda, and interfere with elections in the U.S. and around the world. The indictment alleges he and the Russian Federal Security Service relied on social media and also directed and controlled three political groups, one being the Uhuru movement in St. Pete. Russia has recruited and forge ties with persons and groups around the world who are positioned to amplify and reinforce Russia's messaging campaigns. They're using Russia as a part of a propaganda tool against the people to turn you away. Uhuru's Aretha Akile Kanyan is alleged to be the candidate Russians were supervising in her 2019 run for St. Pete City Council, offering consulting and funding. At this point, Kanyan is considered an unindicted co-conspirator, but has not been charged. Why take their money? Did I ever say I took any money? See, no, 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 I never, that, no, 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 that's what I'm accused of. I never said that, so don't put that in my mouth. I didn't say that. Did you take, don't, did you take money from I, I, look, I don't want to answer your question because you want to take it somewhere. I don't want to take it there. There was also apparent Russian in- But Ghazi took money, and we know that he, you know, it's proven uh, that he took money. Influence. They flew them, you know, to, you know, they, they paid for all types of stuff. And they, they said they actually made their, uh, you know, help make the slogans. <laughs> In the 2017 St. Pete race for mayor. The Uhuru group seen here disrupting political events. According to the indictment, the word reparations was part of alleged discussions between Ayanov and another unindicted co-conspirator who appears to be former mayoral candidate Jesse Neville. I think all of us that... that wow. Look at that. Let's go back. Who appears to be former... This guy right here, too. Wow. You see, you see, you see, like when you, you see these uh, so called uh, th people trying to help uh, black folks, and then, uh, you know, they're actually Russian agents. <laughs> Mayoral candidate Jesse Neville. I think all of us that, that believe in the democracy that is America ought to be concerned um, because if it's coming down to even the local level, then our entire dem democracy is at risk. The Uhuru House was one of three locations. So basically the question becomes a swirling on a political level work uh, as far as, you know, people, you know, like let's say the civil rights movement, you know, they weren't, they weren't, they definitely weren't swirling as far as the civil rights movement. And, uh, you know, they, they got a lot, a lot of things popping off pretty quick and now things have pretty much stagnated. It hasn't been, uh, you know, uh, as far as like the economic lane, you know, black people are getting more and more in debt, you know. Uh, we'll talk about the uh, economics of all this and stuff in the future, but yeah, let, let's finish this up. Locations in St. Pete raided Friday by federal agents as they collect evidence for the current and possibly future indictments. Today's action should serve as a deterrent to other foreign adversaries that the FBI will not tolerate meddling in our democratic process. The other political groups allegedly recruited by Ayanov are in Georgia and California. The feds say what makes this alleged activity illegal is that no one involved was legally registered as a foreign agent. If convicted, Ayanov faces up to five years in prison. There have been no other arrests, but the FBI collected a lot of evidence, so that certainly could change, Allie. It makes you wonder where else this could be going on mm -hmm. and, and how much of it is going on. All right, Haley, thanks. Exactly. How much more is going on? Seriously, how much more? How much more is going on? All this, you know, all this, <laughs> right? This Afro witch is like, um, you know, so, you know, do we know if, uh, you know, Young Thug uh, and all these other people, like, you know, we don't know. We don't know if uh, Kevin Gates, you know, we just talked about Kevin Gates as it relates to Rashad Jamal. You know, people just uh, talking a lot of cap, you know, so if, if Russians are paying for cap, 
you know, who's who's spitting the most cap. A lot of times it's rappers these days that, you know, um, you know, but yeah, so peace, peace y'all. That's it. Yeah, guys, he's uh this Joker guy's uh you know, a Russian agent. <laughs>